Little Sir Garage. Got out to the range as promised. Here is a post range report. Uh, all of these examples that I'm going to show you have been triple safety checked three times. Now you try to figure out, does that mean they were checked nine times? Does that mean they were checked only three? Whatever, I'll let you be the judge. But just trust me, they're safe. Uh, number two, it didn't have a tremendous amount of time here. I had like half an hour at the range. It was a club that was going. I'm not really officially in this club. Somebody I know is like one of the top members. He invited me along. I didn't want to take up too much range space, range space for the club. Had about half an hour. So here's what we got. First, the 1966 Model 10 XNYPD gun. Acted as you'd expect. Solid. The grip felt awesome. Doesn't matter if it's not that target grip. Just that smaller grip. It just, it just doesn't matter. I think felt great in the hand. Solid, heavy, um, confident, the 38 loads. It wasn't plus P stuff, just 38 loads. Felt great. Uh, the double action is smooth as glass. Single action brake is amazing. It's absolutely fabulous. Nothing, nothing beats these Smith & Wessons, I'm sorry. I mean, eh, the Colts are good too. I mean, they're, it's, they're, they're equal. But um, when you get into, like, say, these cheaper guns, they just, there's a reason why these Smith & Wessons are popular. Let's put it that way. And even some broken down, retired, tired old Model 10, doesn't matter. Felt awesome. So, um, again, these aren't loaded. I just keep um, the shell casings from the last round. The last rounds I fired, I keep the shell casings in here just so I could check them out. I want to see firing pin depth, the hits on the primers. Look at that. That's beautiful. I just want to check to make sure, you know, nothing's sticking. These are nice and loose. And that uh, look like no excessive blow-by or anything. And that, uh, more important with automatics, not so much happens with revolvers, but just that the case rims here aren't tearing. There's anything weird going on, bulging, anything like that. And, uh, nope. These, I checked them already. And uh, these are awesome. It functions flawlessly. And I always love, after you shoot them, there's something about it. It, it kind of like, it just makes them feel smoother some kind of way. I don't know. It's almost like things that want to work just like your car. If you just leave it in the garage, you got some like old classic car, you leave it in the garage all the time. It's not going to want to start. It's going to run rough. It's going to work like crap. But if you use it all the time, it's going to idle. You'll be able to stand the quarter up on the air filter. You know what I mean? It's um, use makes them, you know, just like your exercise. They need to be exercised too. Next up, the Ruger Police Service 6, 1987 and 38 Special. Another XPD gun, I would imagine. It, um, it feels, uh, the grip feels a little bit different with this one. Feels a little bit weird uh in my hand this is like an odd hard to explain maybe it's just that i'm used to the smiths but um it just felt like it wasn't as pointable it just felt a little odd the sights are uh, easier to pick up and i'm telling you this right now it's more accurate i'm sorry you know like the whole accuracy thing it was like it, it could just be the, the grip in your hand the, the gun like benched might shoot exactly the same as the smith let's say so it's when I say it's more accurate, for me, it was more accurate. Whatever the reason for that is, if it even is just the way it's sat in my hand or the way I look down the sights or whatever, fine. So I'm not actually saying the gun is more accurate. I'm just saying I shot this more accurately. I was uh, drawing closer to where I was, you know, aiming. Let's put it that way. It was hitting closer to where I was aiming. Um, once again, these are not live rounds. Take it easy. But look at that firing pin hitting nice again, loose. Nothing to get stuck in here. And uh, no excessive blow-by again, bulging cases. Nothing like that. Sweet. That one worked really nice. Then next up, we had the Colt Detective Special. This was a pretty recent acquisition as well. So a lot of all these revolvers, they were fresh in my mind. I got to look through. I know there's some other stuff I got to get out there. 
But uh, this range, I could shoot rifles here too, but um, I want to try to do the rifles. We'll have like a nice outdoor range day for the rifles. We'll wait for it really to get warm. Uh, 1967 here on this guy. How did he work? Again, feels a little odd in the hand, the snub nose. I've heard this before. People say it there. You know, they, that they're just... Uh, they could bite into your hand a little bit. I've heard that. I wasn't really feeling that. Felt nice and smooth. Trigger pull, amazing. Um, the double action, whatever it was, double action or single action, whatever. Just trigger pull was great. And of course, you can see the drop off in accuracy. But I was hitting paper, so it's at uh, what did I have it at? Like twelve yards or something. And um, and I was uh, I was hitting the target. Looked, you know, regular regular small target. But it isn't that inaccurate, but uh, once again, iron pins are hitting nice and uh, nice and smooth. No excessive blow by, no bulging, nothing weird going on there. Looking good. And yeah, this one was brand new, so it, it does, it feels, it feels smoother, even after the cleaning or whatever using them i'm telling you it's like the greatest oil in the world is using them uh what do we have next next up we have mr dreiza here you know what before we even get to that let's do this uh beer zerker style with the weinstefana we talk about the Dreiser. We pour ourselves a nice German beer. That's what I'm talking about. That's a weird view. Sorry, had to do that. Uh, where are we? The Dreiser. And that one's for you, uh, Beer Zerker. Thank you. All right. This thing was amazing. It's really weird in the fact that, number one, so yeah, the sights. The sights are weird. You could just look at it right from here. We knew this going in, that the sights are weird. Never seen a rear sight like that before. It looks like it got caught on something and they just ripped it off. And went, Oh, that could be the sight. And uh, the front dug into that channel like that. I mean, look at that. That is an odd sight. See how, what you're looking at when you're looking down there? You don't know really what's going on. You're like, am I lining up on that? What's... You pick it up eventually, but it's just, it's, it's, it's odd. And it's movement is odd. The way it even, the way this even functions like this is, is odd. It feels weird in your hand. The trigger feels weird. It's, it does this even though it's single action. And, and when you, when it's charged and you pull the trigger, it's, it's, it's like the double click. It feels weak. It feels weird. It feels weak. I wasn't even sure if this thing was going to. Um, be able to detonate the rounds, you know, if it was going to hit the primer strong enough. Well, let me tell you something. This thing ran, man. This thing ran. Um, I, I wanted to even collect, I think I went through like four or five mags. I wanted to collect shell casings just to look to make sure I, because this one I'd worry more about the chamber. I mean, look at these, look at this brass. There isn't even any blow by on the edge, on the, on the edges of these cases. Look at those primer strikes look at that those are deep there isn't even a scratch on this brass no ripping tearing here nothing amazing um and it throws the shell casings forward looking at my video i didn't even really see that happening it kind of looked like a couple of them went to the side i guess those are the ones i ended up with here but i didn't really video the whole time I was shooting it, I, I shot this one a bit, 
and they were all shooting forward. It was just the oddest thing that the brass would fly out forward. Weird. But um, the trigger pull felt great. It was, it felt pointable. It felt snappy. I don't know if it was after, you know, like having these, these, these big heavy revolvers in my hands right before it, but um, it felt like ultra pointable. It felt athletic. It felt, um, I don't even know how to explain it. Did I write anything down here about how it felt? Uh, I did not. <laughs> well, I didn't take any notes. But I'm telling you, I was really, I was genuinely surprised. And you know what? This magazine, it used to like kind of be finicky about in and out. Look at it. It's mint. Look at the action. How smoother the trigger pull. Even how it opens here. It used to stick here when opening. Look at it now. Right? It's like a little mini AR. It's like a handheld AR. And, and it opens up easier. Shooting this thing turned it into a gentleman. I'm telling you. Listen, I've seen these things out there. This is becoming one of my favorites. I, I love this thing right from the beginning. Uh, I, I, it's amazing how it shoots. It's, uh, it was very, very surprising. I loved it. So that's the Dreiser. Cheers to Dreiser. One more drink. Nice. Next up. Oh, and by the way, the ammo that I'm using here, it's this uh, Gecko. Is that how it's pronounced? Gecko. So it's my 32, my 380, and my 38. I, um, I fell into, like, a bunch of this. This was the ammo that was available. I never bought this stuff before. By the way, the Dreiser. Is uh, 1907 in the 32 ACP. I never really um, bought this ammo before, but I, you know, like sometimes these, it'll be like a place where that's what they're, they're like sponsoring, or that's they get like a deal from that company, so they buy a whole bunch. It's kind of like that kind of story. So um, this place that I was buying ammo, it's kind of like all they had. <laughs> so I was like, oh well, I'll just get this stuff. I thought I was cheaping out. I should have bought more. I don't know if this stuff is necessarily known as cheap ammo, but I'm having good luck with it. I love it. And um, next up is the FN model 1910. You can see here, this was originally in 32 ACP in my collection, but I had to add that in because what happened? We got the barrel, 1914, by the way. We got the barrel. This is the original 32 ACP barrel that came in the gun and um as you may know or may not know doesn't matter the um 380 barrel can just be interswapped is that a word interswapped right in here turning this into a 380 gun so shooting 380 or 32 all that's included all you need to do no magazine swap i know you were gonna ask what about the magazine no no magazine swap. All you got to do is swap out the barrels, which takes two seconds. I'm not going to do it now. I got a video up there on the gun itself, on the actual barrel swap. Um, the only thing is, you know, you might have to visit a gunsmith because they just kind of have to have a little bit of fitting done if it's not 100% perfect. Um, so if you don't know what you're doing, definitely get that checked out. But I had... A lot of comments of people saying, like, no, that's not the right barrel. It's not going to work. That's one from a this. That's one from a that. It's not going to happen. Um, it needs to be this. It needs to be that. Nope. You can see right here. It is running mint. And uh, we didn't have any problems at all. Let's clear it. The magazine worked for both. The uh, barrel was perfect. Didn't have any issues. You'll see that I replaced the grip panels here. I'm a big proponent of never replacing stuff like grip panels or anything. I like the original look. The problem with the original grip panels I had on here is that they were the type of plastic where age doesn't do them well from like they're over 100 years old. 
and they started, um, you know, like curling up, kind of like, like pulling away from the metal, just, they were misshapen, and they looked terrible, and um, I wanted to get replacements, correct replacements, they were a fortune to find ones that were as messed up as mine, or I could get replacements that um, were just like a, you know, a, a lesser amount of crappy. But, but still, they just were crappy, and they just looked fake. You know what I mean? It's not like they even really looked like they were just mint originals. They looked plasticky and, 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 and crappy. So if I was going to replace them, and I just didn't like the ones that were on there. And uh, originals just were not an option. I just think FN just screwed up on that. So I was like, all right, well, I'm going to bite the bullet here, and I'm going to change to something else, something more modern. What am I going to do? And then... These type of grips, they're very expensive. This company, I don't actually have, have it in front of me. I forgot what it was. But I've seen these, this actual company, they're like over 100 bucks. Um, they're like a really good, really nice wood. The checkering is done really well. And um, they're beautiful. They really are. And, but they were too expensive for me. And I saw a pair pop up like on eBay or something. Used. And uh, where is it? There's a, a nick in it somewhere. Is it on this side? I think there it is by the screw hole right there. Yep, there it is. That nick right there by the screw hole. Like he took a picture of that and he's like, yeah, they're used as a nick over here. Might have been like even the company selling them on eBay, like damaged ones over there. Who knows? This one over here by the screw, no damage. That's why I always tell you, watch the size of the screwdriver you use because if it's a little too large, that's what you do. So um, it, it had that little bit of damage and it, they literally were up there for like twelve ninety nine or something. I bid, like, much more than that, or like as a proxy bid, but nobody touched it, and I actually walked away with them for that price. So, uh, there you go. That's my grip story. Just lost half the viewers with the grip story, but I got the grip story in. So, here's the, uh, here's the 380 cases that uh, everybody was worried were going to explode. Um, they did not. No excessive blow by here where they're all dark on the sides i did not wipe them off i promise strong firing bin hit this is another gun that feels kind of weak but i don't know if these guns you can't always go by the feel when you pull the trigger how loud the snap is or how it's i'm telling you there's ones that feel weak but uh then when you look at the brass you're like oh my god that's deeper than than most you know but uh yeah, this is this brass is, is perfect. It's like nothing to note. It's perfect. No issues there. And uh, so that was the um, that was the range trip, ladies and gentlemen. We had um, we did have one more, but uh, one more gun at the range. But that is a secret, and we will be bringing you that soon. So uh, stand by for that. And, uh, yeah, here's my target, if anybody's interested. <laughs> um, it's Again, I was really concerned more with function than with accuracy, but uh, this isn't the only target, by the way. There were better ones. I just want you to know. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I, just to show that uh, these guns at, like, 50, I mean, what did I have it at, 15 yards, maybe? 15 yards is further than you think when you're at an indoor range. That's, like halfway down the range i think it's a 30 yard range you know but um you know to be to be pulling groups like this and groups like that this might be you know if i really bared down i'd get a group like that and then uh, you know the flyers really are uh you know all right i'm not gonna make any excuses whatever this is just the target so go into the comments and dish me. that's okay uh, i don't even know why i showed this is just fodder for for everyone to attack me but um, they're hitting the paper. Let's put it that way. I am getting shots on the paper. And uh, the only ones that really matter, this is folded over like this. Is, this is where the clip goes right here. So so these three right here, these could get you in trouble because if you hit the clip, if you hit the clip, you're in a lot of trouble. The guy at the range yells at you. And uh, that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Did I forget anything? No, that was it. Listen, we got a lot coming up. Trust me. Um, I never ask for likes, subscribes, thumbs up, none of that stuff, but get in there. Let's try to get as many people in here as possible. 
Um, if anybody didn't see the last video that I put out, it was a nice promo. That took me an entire evening. I stayed up all night to make that. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I was pretty proud of that, the, uh, the uh, final product. But uh, I wrote in the description there, like, you know, they demonetized that immediately because I used pictures and a snippet of video that's uh, not that's not mine and that's okay i mean it's not mine and if they could make money off of it fine you know what i mean if they just don't want me to monetize it that's fine i'm okay with that but it teaches me something it teaches me that that algorithm that they use is amazing because it identifies that in literally a millisecond the second you hit the post it immediately knows it's just a little scary that Anything that's ever been put to video or that's out there is that identifiable. Like they could be doing the same thing with you or your voice or what you say. I mean, how long before they could do that? Do that with what you're thinking. That's a little scary. But I don't mind because the monetization isn't what it's all about for me. It's the viewers. So some things get demonetized and then it gets struck where whoever owns that says, I don't want this guy using it at all. Um, ACDC, an ACDC video, uh, an ACDC song did that to me, where it just uh, completely doesn't let you post at all. Um, at least this one, it just gives a copyright strike and you can't monetize it, but they let it out there. And I don't mind, that's fine if they do that. Um, because my goal here is just to get viewers, just to get more people in here. So, uh, you know, the more people I could reach, um, the better this channel is. Uh, that's what I think. I, I think that a, like developing a community here is uh, the most important thing. That's my goal, is uh, get some subscribers in here that watch, you know? People commenting and getting uh, dialogue going. In my opinion, that's what it's all about. So hang in there, because I got some really cool stuff going. It'd be really nice to get... Let's double the subscriber base in the next week. Let's do it so we can, the next few videos are going to be amazing and I'd really love to have as many people in here as possible. So thanks everybody, we'll uh, see you soon and I guarantee you are going to be enjoying